Feeling the press of time, the nationalists began to make their move. They talked to these offices, to Ogden, to Brooks, and to McDougall, to get a better sense of what was going on at Newburgh. They decided that it would be well to open communication with Washington and with Washington's closest friend, Henry Knox. Knox was the commander of the garrison at West Point, not far from Newburgh. And so it was given to Governor Morris to open a correspondence with General Knox. He wrote to the general, beginning his letter, my dear friend, the army may now influence the legislatures and if you will permit me a metaphor from your own profession, after you have carried the post, the public creditors will garrison it for you. This was a subtle test. Might Knox help us with his influence over the army to push the states? The task of writing to General Washington was given to Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton and Knox, Hamilton and Washington, had a unusual relationship. Alexander Hamilton was a bastard, born so, in the West Indies. Came to New York on the eve of the revolution, joined in the patriot cause, emerged as a very fine officer, rose to the rank of colonel, came to the attention of the commander in chief, who invited him to join him on his staff, which Colonel Hamilton did. But there was an occasion. It was at headquarters. The colonel was coming down the stairs. The commander-in-chief was going up the stairs. The commander-in-chief said to the colonel, Colonel, I wish you to join me immediately. The colonel responded, In a moment, sir. That was the wrong response. Washington turned on Hamilton and berated him right there. Hamilton took great umbrage at this and resigned from the staff. He later returned to active duty and distinguished himself at the Battle of Yorktown, and then, after that, was elected to the Congress. And so was the task given to Hamilton to write to Washington, to the Commander-in-Chief. He wrote to Washington about the situation. Washington needed no instruction on the discontent in the army. Hamilton pointed it out to him, and he asked Washington to, quote, guide the torrent. Would Washington guide the torrent? He then went on to write to Washington and tell him something that deeply offended the commander-in-chief. He told Washington that there were rumors in the army that he, Washington, had not done enough to support his men. That was deeply hurtful to a man who had never left the side of his army that somehow he could be accused of not standing in their support. I cannot tell you with any certainty that after these letters were received by Knox and Washington, that those two gentlemen talked with one another. The written record is silent, blank. But here's a point where perhaps we should intrude with common sense. I do believe that Knox and Washington, whose headquarters were only a few miles apart, who were the closest of friends, I cannot but believe that they discussed the letters they had just received from Philadelphia. It took a few days for a response to be prepared, but Knox was the first to respond, and he responded to Governor Morris. Sir, I consider the reputation of the American Army as one of the most immaculate things on earth. We should even suffer wrongs and injuries to the utmost degree of toleration rather than sully it in the least degree. I hope to God that the Army will never be directed than against the enemies of the liberties of America. Well. Morris knew where Knox stood. A few days later, Washington responded to Colonel Hamilton. Sir, 
the fatal tendency to involve the army in political matters would be productive of civil commotion and end in blood. I stand as citizen and soldier. Note the order of the words. I stand as citizen and soldier.